The courts officially say training AI on copyrighted data is legal. Picture this, you walk into a library, check out every single book, memorize them all, and then use that to become a best-selling author. The original authors get nothing beyond that initial library purchase. Sounds unfair, right? Well, that's how current copyright law has worked for decades, and now two courts have ruled that AI companies can legally do the same without paying the original creators. It's the biggest legal turning point for AI models since their release. But that's not the only update. Palantir just slapped a $800 million government contract to expand its real-time AI surveillance systems for U.S. citizens. And Anthropic shared new research showing that despite all of the media hype, most people aren't using AI for emotional support. And Google launched a new app that lets you preview how clothes would look on your body. Let's break it all down, but before we get started, please hit that subscribe button and say hello to me in Seychelles. It's monsoon season here, so it's super windy. I came for my birthday. I've swam in waters with turtles and sharks and a stingray it literally hit my ankle. I cried. I'm not meant for this little mermaid life, apparently. Anyway, let's get into it. This week, two major lawsuits, one against Anthropic and one against Meta, both ended with rulings that said AI training counts as fair use. I've talked about AI copyright law for years, so I feel quite perplexed by the clarity provided by the courts. Authors sued two AI companies for using their books to train AI models, saying you can't feed our entire books into your AI without paying us. But the court disagreed and said that training AI is transformative, meaning it creates something fundamentally new rather than just copying and therefore qualifies as fair use. One judge even made the statement, and I quote, it's like any reader aspiring to be a writer. I'm gonna hold my personal opinions here to try to explain where most people are missing the bigger picture. AI companies had two main legal arguments that they could make. First was leaning heavily on fair use exemptions. There are usage categories when evaluating fair use lawsuits, but Meta and Anthropic argue that their AI training is transformative. Their position is that it adds something new with a different character and doesn't substitute for the original work's use. We expected that defense in these lawsuits. That's not surprising. But the second argument is really the game twister and it's touching an area of copyright law that hasn't really been tested before. If you've been with me for a while you know what I'm going to say because I'm always talking about this theory. There is a subtle argument that there's a difference between publicly distributed copyrighted works versus privately used within a company. This is huge because U.S. copyright law has always focused on public distribution not private internal use. They essentially argued that the copyrighted material was used for internal knowledge with no intent of it being repeated or regurgitated publicly. It's completely a gray zone that copyright law has never really touched before. Think about it this way. When you check out a library book, you're not paying the author every time you read it. You're not paying them when you remember quotes from it. You're not even paying them later when you use it to learn how to write your own book. The library paid once and now it can be read by thousands of people over and over again. The original copyright owner gets paid once, not every time someone's brain processes that information. The course says AI models are essentially doing the same thing. The AI reads the book, learns from it, incorporates that knowledge, being used for internal processing just like your brain does when you read. It's a really clever way to sidestep traditional copyright laws, which has only been focused on preventing unauthorized distribution. At the same time, I don't really believe this defense because there's been so many examples of the AI models basically providing a one-to-one -one copy of the originals. And even the court said that the end result could have been very different if the authors provided more proof of clear reproduction. So now we're seeing a shift to the authors to not only prove infringement, but harm. And this has been traditionally how it's always been done, but I didn't expect this for AI model training. Now, I really want to take a few steps back and take a look at what's been happening at the U.S. Copyright Office leading up to this ruling. I have said for years and years we are operating in a legal loophole here. We need new laws. We need new precedents. Where do we get that? The U.S. Copyright Office. So in May 2025, the U.S. Copyright Office actually released a pre-publication version of its long-awaited decision on whether training AI on copyrighted material was legal. I read all 100 pages of it, and it was made very clear that in most all cases, training AI on copyrighted data would be considered copyright infringement. But the timing was super weird. The report was published as pre-publication, which isn't standard practice, and the Register of Copyrights who oversaw it was dismissed by the Trump administration the very next day. So we have federal courts saying one thing, and we have the U.S. Copyright Office saying the complete opposite. But there's also another contradiction that no one's talking about. Back in January, the U.S. Copyright Office made another ruling that everyone seems to be ignoring, that AI output is actually public domain, meaning a Allegedly, it can't be copyrighted. Companies, you really need to pay extra attention to this because it technically means any content you make with AI is not copyrightable, according to the US Copyright Office, even if the AI companies say that you own the content. Well, if you're still with me, I'm kind of scratching my head here. As we just talked about, there were two main legal defenses they could have pulled, fair use and the focus on distribution versus private internal use. Fair use, I actually can't believe it went through. The second distribution one, I actually expected because it really is a legal loophole. Even
even if that wasn't a popular opinion to have. But we now have this bizarre situation where AI companies can use copyrighted works as input, not have to pay the copyright owner any royalties, but then everything they produce is considered public domain that anyone can technically use even though companies don't actually believe that output is public domain. Which, that hasn't been decided in court yet, but creators kind of lose protection on both ends, which is kind of crummy. Copyright protection is getting diluted the more it goes down this AI content chain, and that wasn't properly addressed in either court ruling. Do you think that the US Copyright Office ruling was fair? Do you think that this will be changed? Do you think that now AI companies are gonna see this as the green light to just train on any copyright material that they want? I'm getting flashbacks to Spotify here, where streaming was technically considered a legal loophole for a period of time. It wasn't a physical download, and they just decided what they would pay the artist for a very long time until the Music Modernization Act came up and addressed that, and I'm feeling this is gonna be the same thing. I'm feeling like AI companies are going to decide how much to pay those copyright holders now, which are probably gonna be pennies, until the law is addressed. So where do we go from here? For creators, this means the conversation now shifts for you from can AI use our work to how do we ensure they're paying for it properly in the first place. We need new copyright laws because of AI training. This just doesn't feel like it fits. My friends in DC, I think I'm gonna take up a career in lobbying. How do I do that? Where do I get started with that? Sign me up. Second update. Ooh, it's bright. The US government just expanded its relationship with Palantir, awarding an $800 million contract to scale its AI surveillance infrastructure across military and civilian agencies. This is part of the Maven Smart System, a centralized platform originally built for drone targeting that's now being connected to agencies like the IRS, Homeland Security, Social Security, ICE, and even parts of the healthcare system. The idea is to centralize all government data and use AI to detect patterns. Some are saying that they are essentially building a predictive model of American behavior. I can't really confirm that. But Palantir markets this as predictive analytics, helping agencies find threats, fraud, or risks before they happen. Privacy experts, on the other hand, say that functionally, this is pre-crime modeling. It's not just tracking what you've done, but it's making guesses about what you might do next. Legally, this is allowed because of how current laws define surveillance. Most privacy laws focus on distribution. Here's this distribution word again. Whether your data is shared or sold. But in this case, Palantir and the US government aren't distributing anything. It's just combining data inside one system. Internal use, that freaking loophole again, guys. Here we go again. Even if the data is drawn from sensitive databases but is used internally, is often exempt from regulation. That's why this deal kind of matters and why we're talking about it. AI is being deployed in government without clear rules behind the scenes. Again, I say, I guess I need to go back to DC in the swamp and guess I need to get into lobbying. I know way too much about this. I need it out of my brain. Third update, the United States Congress signed a federal moratorium that blocks states and local governments from passing their own AI regulations for five years. The provision is part of a larger mega bill with Republicans championing it to avoid a patchwork of AI laws in the states that could slow down innovation and undermine U.S. competitiveness, especially against China. Critics, including Democrats, 17 Republican governors, AI safety advocates, and consumer protection groups warn this move would strip states of their ability to protect residents from things like deep fakes, biometric misuse, and algorithmic harm. The revised version tentatively exempts some areas, such as child safety, artist rights, and biometric protections, as long as new state laws don't place an undue or disproportionate burden on AI companies. States like California, and Tennessee, which already passed AI-specific laws, would be blocked from actually enforcing them. I think this is gonna severely slow down AI regulation by doing this. Congress is way too slow. For the third freaking time today, do I need to go into lobbying? Should I run for Congress? This is nuts. Fourth, people use AI for companionship much less than we were led to believe. Despite all the headlines of people forming emotional bonds with AI, new data from Anthropic suggests that AI companionship is far less common. Out of 4.5 million Claude interactions, fewer than 0.5 involved companionship or role play. Even emotionally driven requests like coaching or advice only made up 2.9% of total usage. They say most people are using Claude for practical help, writing, summarizing, researching, not as a replacement friend. Anthropic's findings claim that while emotional use still exists, it's a small fraction of how AI is actually being used, but I actually have to argue that I don't really feel like anybody would go to Anthropic to ask for dating advice. Most people are gonna use ChatGPT, so I actually feel like this data subset here is not an accurate representation of how people are actually using this data. It's really valuable research that is being provided to us. Maybe it is true and they're not using it as much as we thought, but most people outside of AI don't really know what Anthropic is. They're gonna go to ChatGPT, so I want this research done with ChatGPT. And lastly, 
this launch is actually so cool. Finally, some tech guys here instead of AI drama. Google just launched Doppel, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, an AI-powered fashion app that lets users visualize how clothes might look on their body without needing to upload a photo. Instead, users input height, weight, and other details to generate a realistic virtual avatar. The app is designed to reduce return rates in online shopping and is already being tested with major retailers. And that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed this view with me and that you enjoyed watching my hair just fly everywhere in the wind. Please remember to comment, like, and subscribe. Tell me what is the most interesting thing. Do you think that the US Copyright Office ruling was fair? Thank you all so much, and I'll see you all next time.